Back in the early 90s, Hardcore and Jungle, with their sample breakbeats, pitched up vocals and trouser flapping sub, dominated the UK dance music scene. These massive tracks were created on limited hardware and computers you'd usually associate with playing games. Pete Cannon, advertising composer by day and hardcore junglist by night, recreates an authentic jungle sound by combining modern technology with the original hardware used to create these tracks. Hello, I'm Pete Cannon. Um, you might know me from making such things as hip-hop music and jungle music. I run a label called N4. We're in N4 right now on Green Lanes. Um, I also make a lot of hip-hop music with Boy Dirty Dyke. I've worked with Inja, uh, Ocean Wisdom, Verb T, High Focus Records. I also do a lot of adverts and sync music. Um, work with Apple, doing a worldwide campaign with them, and Adidas, Porsche, and other companies that help me pay the bills to make the music that I like. The first bit of kit that I ever got to make music on was an Amiga 1200. I got it, I remember getting it for Christmas. It was the Captain Planet kit with the Captain Planet game. But my friend had a copy of this program called Optimed 4. Um, and you could like sample little bits into the computer and sequence little sounds. Um, so we didn't really have a manual, so we kind of like figured it out together. So it was that very first bit of kit that kind of got me into it. I just wanted to see if the Amiga still worked. So uh, I, it was in my mum's shed, in the bottom of the shed, in the corner. And I was like, oh shit, I wonder if this still works. So I got it back out and some of the old discs actually still fired up. And I never had like, you can actually connect a sampler to it. So you can get like a 950 or well, any sampler and use it if you've got a little MIDI box so you can hook up a, a sampler to the Amiga. Um, I never had that as a kid, so I thought, I want to get it back out and see if I can actually figure out the process of kind of like how these, these geezers used to make jungle on it back in the day. I guess that in itself was like the reason, the catalyst for getting it back out, just listening to old jungle tracks, Aphrodite, Busy Bee, and just wanting to have a bit of fun getting away from Ableton. Yeah, and then it just kind of escalated from there. And now we have a fucking mountain of synths, romplers and fucking samplers <laughs> take over my room. You've got something like the 950, which is a very famous sampler used by a lot of hip hop people like Pete Rock and DJ Premier, also used by people like Shy FX in the early jungle scene. It's a 12-bit sampler, It's it's got amazing AD converters and it has a very round sound. It's also known for its filter, which is really deep. It can take a little bit longer to set up and it, yeah, it can be a bit of a faff, but I mean, for the sound alone, it's kind of worth it. There's lots of like emulators and stuff you can use for Ableton, Logic, um, 950 emulators, but I wanted to do the process just for like the respect for the music that I used to listen to and just go through kind of what people were the process they were doing in the early 90s. I mean, I use the 950 for its 12-bit round sound, and I use the 1100, which is kind of like a introduced a little bit later by Akai. Um, that was a sampler that Liam from The Prodigy used to use on like the first three albums. He used it with a W30 Roland, I think, to sequence it. Um, it's a very bright sampler. It's very kind of sharp, and it was the one of the first Akais to have like all the multiple um, program so you could have on Cubase 16 kind of setups from the, the sampler running on Cubase. Listening to that early Prodigy album, I wanted to go through those kind of processes those people were doing. When you open these samplers up, they've got nothing in them. So it's not like loading up, you know, your, your, your sample banks and just going looking through a million sounds. It already sets parameters kind of off the bat, which I like. And it's, it's kind of pushed me back into sampling as well, like digging for, like going through records and trying to get original sounds. Because you, I've got to put something into it anyway, so I was like, well, why don't I just look what I've got, as opposed to using sample packs, um, or just trying to do something a bit different to what maybe a, a, a lot of people are doing, you know? It, it's, yeah, it's exciting. It's fun, it's fun. It's actually fun, which like, you know, I think comes out in the end product as well, I'd like to think. So I'm going to show you a few examples of techniques that I use in the studio. I'm going to make some classic rave chord stabs, sample some things into the Akai, show the time stretching features, a uh, bit of sequencing on the Amiga, something on the Atari, and maybe like a full track. 
Okay, so this is the Akai S1100. <clears throat> I think it was the first Akai sampler with effects in it. It's got a couple of reverbs, delays, echoes, pitch shift. This Akai that I've got has an SD replacement. So this is where the original floppy disk drive was and it connects to the SCSI port at the back and then allows me to have essentially thousands of floppy disks on a little SD card. So it's plug and play as well, which is great. This was set up by my man Jazz Cat. So if you want to like save parts, it's kind of easy to kind of dip between setting up different key groups and samples, which is makes it really useful for today and a lot easier. So you go to disc mode and as you can see here, it has four, sep what it thinks is four little hard drives inside it when really that's four partitions of the SD card. Um, really bright sampler, amazing for chopping up little bits and breaks. I've um, got, got an Eamon here, classic Eamon type of sounds, and I've chopped it into numerous pieces. And I'm going to show you some like that, okay? So the classic type of thing, making jungle in Octomed, you know, having your pieces of your Eamon, chopping them up, and programming them uh, in the tracker here in Octomed. That's... That's the uh, waveform that you get. Uh, you know, that was in 1991, that was, that was a big deal. It's because you can see it, which you can't see in the 950. So uh, that was great. And then the very famous feature of the Akai is the time stretch. So what that's doing is it's stretching the sound uh, over a longer period of time, but it has a cycling uh, effect. We see that cyclic. Um, so let's just have a look at that and we'll just show time stretching you can change the percentage of how much you stretch it and then you've even got a quality amount so oh, I'll put it on that a nice 20 um, with the Akai system you have to name everything give it a new name because it saves in little ports where the samples are so we're stretching this sound now that Eamon break we just played we give it a new new name so I'll call it Eamon with a time stretch with a T enter and then if we press go can see it's now stretching the audio for that classic jungle time stretch sound. There we go. <laughs> if we go back here and then we can select it with this time stretch sound, uh, everything's up on the desk, you should be able to hear it. Which is that classic sound. So um, a lot of people would then pitch this up and you get this effect. The first time I heard that was, I think it was, was it? Yeah, Slip Map on SMD3 and it blew my head off. That was the most futuristic sound like I'd heard then. So a, another reason for getting these samplers out is that feature alone. You can do it on Ableton, you can do it, you can do it on everything, but there's a certain, you know, algorithm or a certain way that the Akai does it, which is synonymous with that jungle sound, you know? So then you're chopping up the snares, you're time stretching the snare. It's a great thing to use. There's also just a just a footnote there, you can get a plugin, or I think it's a program called the Akizer, which emulates this on your computer if you want to try that. It's got that kind of same sound. And then there's also settings in Ableton, like uh, in the different time stretch areas uh, where you can you, you can manipulate it to sound similar to that. But yeah, it's it's a it's an amazing sound. I love that. We've got the break kind of cut up here and then what I will do is I will sequence a part in Octomed. This is Octomed 4. It's a tracker so you've got essentially here eight channels um, to play with. So this Amiga is midded up to this Akai and then this can trigger the sounds from the Akai. Um, it's not like the door where it goes along this way, it's, you know, it goes down. So if I just show you an example, this is the Eamon break here, which is on the keyboard. So you've got all those different parts chopped up, and then if we just have a look at this here.
So you get the idea. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I also went back to this program because chopping up brakes on it is just so much fun. Um, it's all kind of done in increments of like uh, by four and uh, by eight and twos. And if you want to do triplets, you do it on the six because what actually happens is you're making the music in blocks. So you'll have, um, if you just see that again, this is um, one bar and you know, two bar. So you do it in four bar pieces and then you build it up in the sequencer here so that you can put them together. So a lot of people ask me about like setting up the kind of basics in an Akai sampler. I always say you want to edit the sample, which is recording in, and then you want to assign that sample to a program. In this program, you have things called key groups, which are respond to the keys on the MIDI keyboard. So it's like the type of thing that's already set up in Ableton where you just throw a simpler or a sampler on and the keys are there and you chuck your sampler on. You just have to do that basically. So it's, it's not too complicated. Record your sample, edit your sample, put it in a program with a key group. So now I've got one for my drums here, one for my bass and my other sounds, and then these all assigned to different MIDI channels and different outputs on the mixing desk. So that's kind of how it's put together. It also, yeah, it's just connected through MIDI to the Amiga. So this is the, the MIDI page on, the, on Optimed, uh, and you can load your samples into these slots here. So I have the first 16 um, synced to all these uh, synths and samplers around here. So you can see that's how you choose your MIDI sample, uh, your MIDI channel. So I've got number 10 is assigned to my Amen breaks here. And that's how the Amiga responds. If I change it, it's not on, but they've got other sounds say on the sampler, which is, Yeah, I mean, we've got a little track here, a few sounds just to show it kind of like coming in. You can kind of just have something like this. So that's like a little sequence I've done there, um, just kind of putting it together. I usually start making something here. Sometimes, it, you know, you'll transfer it to Ableton or I'll do like the whole song in here. So I've done a version of this and um, like, have a listen. Wicked, okay, so um, I've got a lot of synths as well set up, early kind of 80s ones, 90s ones. We've got the Juno 2 and the Poly 61. One of the wicked features on these is you can do something called a chord memory, um, which is like classic kind of rave sounds and stabs on one key. So just show an example, you can play a chord like that, hit chord memory, and then you've got it on one finger there, and then you can play things like this. know that 808 state how's it go yeah I mean this synth alone for like those stabs is and then you've got a similar setting on the Juno 2 um, so you can play again a chord Uh, that's on third, so you've got it on one again. Again, these synths just, you know, there's a, a lot of plugins you can get. You can get a Juno 2 one, but it's just those little features that like kind of lend to the rave sound, those chord kind of sounds, you know? I've loaded up the Atari ST this time, the, the 520 with the four meg memory in it in there. This is Cubase 2 from 1999. A little bit more familiar, the kind of linear runnings um, of like a door today. So 
I mean, everything has been connected to the synths and the samplers again. And f this was like the original kind of advanced sequencer from the early 90s, you know? We've got um, a few sounds from the Poly 61, as we were talking about before, doing and layering the chords. So you've got, which is there. kind of cool um, we've got a few sounds from the D10 string down here classic kind of ravey strings um, great on the top we've got the Korg Wave Station AD here which is a multi timbral synthesizer you can have 16 outs connecting we've got a couple of sounds set up in here if we go on channel 2 Right, uh, and then the Akai layering in some drums, a few Amen pieces together. One big benefit of using this, say, over Optimed, is that you can uh, easily play chords into it, and the editing for kind of music notation is a little easier. Uh, you don't have to do your four times tables as much, but uh, kind of put it all together, and uh, this is how it sounds. This track also uses the Boss DE200 delay, which is an old 80s delay unit. Um, it's on the vocal, you can hear in the track, and it has a wicked little modulation feature which you can move the delay with, it sounds kind of cool. Um, that's just linked on the auxiliary on the desk, and it's just going over the vocal that's in this one as well, so you can hear that. I also use the Super Chorus on the Digitech, which is running through on the synths on here, on a separate channel. Uh, as an insert, so that's going as like giving a unification of like the synths to give me a bad sound. So they're like the, the two kind of basic effects that I've been using, as well the desk itself has a couple of little delays and reverbs that are built in, um, so an amalgamation of those kind of four effects. So this is a little 8-bit cartridge that goes into the back of the Amiga and then it allows you to connect anything to sample uh, in the back. You can connect turntables, whatever you need to do. So you can then sample in and it has capabilities to do 8-bit sound, which is a little bit raw, but uh, a lot of early rave stuff was kind of done like that. Um, and then you can play the sounds on the keys. And you can see the waveform there. So that's an 8-bit A. And then we can load in lots of other sounds, which is the best thing kind of about this setup with the Amiga. So you can hear it's, it's quite quite a rough sound. It's, it is 8-bit, but I mean, with a little bit of EQing and some effects on the desk, you can get creative with it. I load a lot of breaks in there, a lot of different sounds, and I've got an EP coming out that is um, made exclusively on four channels of 8-bit audio out of the Amiga. Um, as luck would have it, we've just got some test presses in the post, so let's have a little look and listen. Um, these have been cut by the legendary Simon The Exchange, who used to cut a lot of old jungle back in the day at The Exchange and he's still using all the original equipment from the 90s, uh, mastering stuff. This is for my label M4. Uh, it's four breakbeat and jungle tracks uh, made just with the Amiga itself, four channels of 8-bit audio. So uh, yeah, let's have a listen. These are a straight 8-bit. So it's, uh, it's a little bit different. You can hear the roughness in it.
sounds crispy to me. So this one has a hard drive in it. So this is a hard drive one and two. So if we load my music programs, let's have a look in here. Load up to Med 4. Look at that cool little synth graphic. Have that. Yeah. They get. They actually gave this away. Uh, I think it was with maybe Amiga Format or See You Amiga back in the day. So there you go. And this was a freeware version. So that's the main page. And then we load up our songs and samples from this. There's the track load the song so this one's got eight channels in it and it's been fully arranged in the amiga down here as you can see all the different blocks put together let's have a listen
that's all for now. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to like and share it and be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you know when we upload new content. Also find us on Twitter, Instagram and at our website. Thanks for watching.